All right, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's May 17th, Monday morning. It's about 5 o'clock right now. But I'm going to read a little bit to y'all this morning. The title of this is The Reason. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their heart. Lest they should believe and be saved. Luke chapter 8, verse 12. Disinterested sinners don't value the gospel when they hear it. So the devil is able to take the word out of their hearts. The gospel has not captured their attention, and therefore they give it no thought. A parachute is of little value to someone who doesn't believe that they have to jump 10,000 feet. But those who know they are in danger will greatly value the parachute because it will save their lives. This is why it is essential to preach future punishment according to the law. God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. It is because of God's holiness and his love of justice that each of us needs a Savior. Those who understand and believe will embrace Jesus Christ for the sake of their very lives. For the soul search today, it says, What part of the gospel message captured my heart? Father, please help me to hold on to your every word. So that's a little something for y'all to think about today. Um, see, I'm getting ready to head to work. And Lord willing, I'll make it there. And I'll check back in with y'all later. Morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. See, it's 6 o'clock. I just got here and drove to work today. I got a couple trucks coming in behind me. I guess I can get them loaded out. But, uh, so we'll see how the day goes. I don't think the, uh, quote is quite like we want it to be. But, who knows. Anyway, I'm going to go get this thing fired up and get these trucks out of here. There goes, uh, load number one this morning. That there, that would be a J.W. Sanders truck. I should have another Sanders truck out there. And George out there. Hopefully I'll knock this pile down a little bit. I loaded one load out of it. Still got another one. Probably a load and a half there. But uh, let's see it's 618. So I'll have all these loaded before the other crew gets here. They'll get here about 7 o'clock. The rest of the crew. Second load, um, let's see. Yeah, I still got a, a rack there. A rack there. That B got one, two, three racks. So we still got another two, three loads of fly along. But uh, anyway, my trucks are starting to show up. I think I got two of them out there, so I'm getting ready to load some green bull on them. The other crew ought to be here shortly. Right, everybody, there's load number three. Uh, the crew finally showed up. Bye, 
everybody, that's load number four. Load number four. Everybody, that's load number five. Load number five. Seven forty-five. Load number five. Number six. Number six. Should have one more. Should have John out there. All right. Got a little one over there, baby. All right, everybody. It goes number seven. I'll be the end of the first round. Um, skin tight, he's still out today. Uh, he's out on vacation. So. He's supposed to be back tomorrow, but then Cat Killer, he's going to be out tomorrow. And it is what it is, boy. Hi, right, everybody. George has made it back for the second load. It's uh, 20 after 10. Frank, he broke down. He had a uh, engine problem. Alright. Good to go. But yeah, Frank broke down. He had a couple injectors go out. JP over there measuring his log. They got us cutting uh, different logs and uh, we don't have a bar on our saw buck to measure it, so we kind of have to make sure we get it right. Because what they loaded, they loaded it onto a barge like shipping containers, and uh, if it ain't right, they won't fit in the shipping container. And the meal's a long ways away, so we don't need to send nobody up there and then they get turned around. But yeah, it's supposed to be 19.2 to 19.6. And uh, we ain't, the long, biggest bar we got is a 17.6. So you I don't know, I, I'm measuring mine. We got a 10 foot six mark and an eight foot six mark. So I just measured mine a little bit before the six, four to 10 and uh, a little bit after the eight. Mine been coming out all right, but JP, his saw buck, uh, measurements are a little bit different. Frank is back. Um, can't remember if I told y'all or not, but uh, he called me a little while ago. Said he broke down. Truck went to smoking real bad when he left, and uh, the computer went off talking about he had uh, failed injector. All right. But um, he got her going. The other day he had to run his truck low on, on fuel because he uh, couldn't find fuel nowhere or whatever. And I reckon he picked up some trash or something. He took the line off, blew it out. Seems to be running all right. Uh, there's my wife calling me out. I gotta answer this, fellas. Right, I'm back, fellas. Yeah, so anyway, you got her going. But, uh, got her. Let's 
see. I got two more outside trucks coming. Uh, we had a pretty good day today. Um, got to start hauling some of that stuff to to Wilmington. I don't know, man. It's probably 100, 120, probably 120 miles from here at least. But, uh, I mean, let's see what, I don't know. I don't want to say nothing and uh, get myself in trouble, you know what I mean? But we ain't got enough loads to really, as much as we can produce. So, we're going to have to start hauling something there. And it'll work out all right. I just gotta gotta be able to orchestrate it right. Cause uh, if, if I see him with my trucks up there, he, he he'll get back and get one load. You know what I mean? But he ain't gonna have time. You know, 120 miles. You're looking at five, you know, two, three hours, two and a half hours to get there. So you're looking around five, six hour trip. It'll be all right. I'll get it figured out. But anyway, um, this morning I put a, posted a video. Uh, I think it was Great Weekend or something. I call it. I can't remember. But anyway, it was uh, it had some other stuff, but it had. I had my brother's testimony up there that he gave Sunday and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my brother who he is to me and kind of the role he's played in my life my brother is I think 18 years older than me so, you know, he's always, uh, we're not necessarily father-son relationship, but, you know, pretty close to it. And um, I've always looked up, you know, to my bigger brother, good or bad. I've always, you know, wanted to be, be like my brother. You know, my mom and dad used to tell me not to, because as you, if you listen to his testimony, he weren't always, you know, on the right path. But um, it didn't matter to me. It was my brother. I, you know, go where my brother went. You know, I do whatever my, you know, I always wanted to be like my big brother. And um, we both kind of went. We both went down the same path, you know, drug addiction, crime and stuff, and um, we both kind of got back on track around the same time, you know. Um, I got clean, well, I, I can't say completely clean, but uh, I was still on methadone, but anyway, I got clean a little bit before he did, before he and then he went to prison and um, you know a lot a lot changed in my life and uh, he weren't there you know what I mean and um, when I got clean I didn't necessarily uh, it weren't I didn't do it hundred percent now yeah I I got clean a hundred percent you know but um I still weren't living right I weren't you know going to church and you know trying to raise my kids you know in a good home and 
I was doing a hell of a lot better than I was, you know, but I still was kind of lost. And um, when my brother got out of prison, he had to move. He couldn't live with me. I was on probation. And, uh, my mom, my mom, my dad had passed, you know, and then my mom moved to Indiana. So he didn't have nowhere. He ended up having to go live with his his mom. We had a different mom, but uh, but anyway. My brother, while in prison, he found, you know, he found Jesus, found himself, and, uh, like he always does, I follow, he leads, I follow, and, um, he led me to church, and he led me to a church that I enjoyed, a church where I felt at home at, and, um, that was an experience that I hadn't really had a whole lot of as far as going to a church and not feeling judged and not feeling like I'm the worst person in the whole you know whole building but um so yeah that's a little bit about my brother he's always been a somebody I looked up to whether that was good or bad, you know. I learned a lot from my brother. And I learned a lot from, you know, my mom and dad too, but I don't know, you know, kind of how you, your kids always, they don't want to listen to their parents. If their parents say something, then that makes them not want to listen to it that much more kind of deal or well, that's how I was and um, but I would I would go with my brother I mean I would if he said something I would consider it you know I wouldn't necessarily do it but um I would listen more you know what I mean and uh, I'm just uh, I'm real proud of my brother that now that he can be a good role model for me and I love it when people my, my brother don't live around here so people don't see him and I love it when you know people ask me How, how's your brother doing and this and that and, and now I can tell him you know he's doing good you know but um, anyway that's a little bit about that there's a lot more a lot more to come um three loads before um, the other crew got there. I mean the rest of the crew. So that was nice. Uh, I don't know. I might. I don't know if I'm going to keep driving to work or not. I don't know. The gas does seem to be coming back around pretty good. Um, everywhere had gas this morning. And uh, there weren't no long, great big long lines no more, so. And that's a good thing. Alright, that ought to be enough. Alright, buddy, pull up.
that's 42, 9, plus 36, 135. All right, buddy, you good to go. Yeah, close enough. But anyway, yeah, that's a little bit about my brother. I, my brother, he also, he runs a loader over there where he lives at. And uh, I've been trying to get him. I tell him, look, you need to make your own videos, man. They do it a little bit differently than we do. They got a chipper and um, they pretty much cut the grade out, chip the rest. But, uh, maybe the man you, you can talk to everybody else, you can talk to them, but maybe he will. Oh, here's my wife calling me again. Uh, I'll check back in with y'all later, fellas. All right, everybody, let's load this truck here. Old Milwaukee. The kid is back. Kid is running off the map. Yeah, them JW Sanders, they don't want you to touch that trailer. They don't want to get in no trouble. Boss man see a scratch on it, they gonna want to know what happened. Milwaukee, a good old boy. Uh, I've known him forever. He he knew me when I was a little baby. You know what I mean? He used to work for my dad, and uh, old Milwaukee will work now. My daddy, um, he used to help my dad out a lot. Holidays, Saturday, Sunday, twelve o'clock at night didn't matter. Milwaukee would come. And uh, he's getting a little up there in age now, but he's still, it ain't slowed him down there a bit. I don't know how old he is, but he got, he got to be getting up there now. But uh, he ain't slowed down there a bit. I run into that a lot out here um, as far as meeting people that know me but I don't know I don't know them you know what I mean and I know Milwaukee but um meet a lot of people you know so man I remember you when you were a little baby well uh, I ain't got no idea who you are but um that's nice but uh blue man truck <laughs> Side dragon. Uh, you, you, you know, you know, I think you think my book was more than you. <laughs> hey, I know, man. They ain't give me hardly nothing now. I know what you mean. You just got five. There's no round wood. Small, eighteen. Around wood. I just don't want to take the story. Yeah, you know, I don't know what to do. I was doing screw that body up. I didn't cut the book with on him. Screw all those wheels up now. Yeah, make the other ones get all back up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then it'd be time for them to close. Yeah, show me just over 
<laughs> but yeah, the mills, the mills are like that, man. If one closes, then everybody floods the other mill, you know, that takes the same type of wood, especially pulp wood. And then they get all backed up. And so then they close. And uh, it's like that every summer. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. That's uh, one of the plus sides of having your equipment paid for because um, there ain't no guarantees out here, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it sucks to have to be at, not being at full production or have to take an extra day off because you done run out of quota. But um, you have to do that and still make a payment. It really, you know, hits hard. All right, JP, don't put another one up there at 37 percent. Feel this, uh, you gotta fill a ticket out for him.
right there, buddy. There goes the last load. Number 19 for today. Ain't what I want him, but uh, I'll take it. You know, it is what it is. But anyway. I want to thank everybody for y'all hanging out with me today. And uh, Lord willing, we'll get up and do it again tomorrow.